you're ready. Good afternoon and welcome to the Hans County Board of Supervisors. Um, today is a very difficult day for me as uh, board president of the Hans County Board of Supervisors. It's also a very solemn day for the citizens of the city of Hans County and the city of Jackson. Uh, we have an announcement that we'd like to make as it relates to one of our uh, fellow supervisors and for that I would like to uh, introduce the daughter of Mr. Uh, Doug Anderson, Mrs. Uh, Jackie Anderson Woods. Good afternoon. Um, let's see, uh, I was born in 1976 and I was thinking about what I was going to say. Um, I've known my dad as Representative Doug Anderson, Senator Doug Anderson, Supervisor Doug Anderson, but never Doug Anderson. So today I get to say that as of January the 1st, I will know him as simply Doug Anderson. Um, it's been a long 36 years. He's been elected since I've been born. Um, as you know, he had a couple of strokes and he didn't recover as fast as we would like him to. But we are working on his health, and we're going to continue to work on his health, which is why we decided that it's now time for us to uh, take him back from the community and actually focus on him. Um, there's some people that he wanted me to thank. Of course, his desk partner of many years who would have been here, um, Senator Hardin, um, on her passing. That was a hard one for him. It was like a, you know, being a desk mate the Senate for so many years is like a roommate. So um, Representative Jim Evans, my uncle, Dr. James Anderson, who actually started his career um, in 1975 when he actually run. Um, so many people, Eddie Fair, my best friend of 20 years, Tony Yarber, who I made come out here with me, <laughs> um, Carmen, who's been a great help, my sister Denise, who won't talk on camera, and um, you know, of, uh, Supervisor Kenny Stokes, Supervisor Graham, everybody who has helped us this journey. Um, we just say thank you, and uh, we appreciate the media and all the calls and just giving us a chance to share our debt with you, but, you know, now it's time for us to take him back and uh, let him be just Doug Anderson, so he has a lot of babysitting to do. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. How is your father handling this? Uh, how is he feeling about this, this big decision? Um, it's his decision. You know, um, we, we talked to him about it. I think I suggested it because I felt like um, his speech recovery wasn't going as fast as I wanted it to go, I, or I thought it should go. I actually live in Georgia, and when I would come home, um, his speech wasn't developing as fast as I thought it should have been. Um, so I have some other extensive therapy for him to do, and there's no way that he can continue to conduct county business and also be um, focusing on his health as well. So he's excited. He has a deep sea fishing trip planned. <laughs> so he hasn't um, really had a chance to go on a vacation um, in a long time because it's always something to do. So, Aside from the speech issues, were there any other issues that led to this decision? Well, you know, anytime you have people that attack you and, you know, are trying to find every other way to uh, put you down and take your seat, um, I think that he just wanted to go out on his terms. You know, you had people that were trying to get people to come and see him to see if he was competent. And all the foolishness that distracted us from county business. And I think that this way he came in um, to Mississippi as the legislature's on his term and he'll leave out on Hines County on his terms. And the kids, our kids are getting older. My three kids are now playing basketball. He has a granddaughter in California and he has a daughter here, a granddaughter here. And we're just ready to have him more. How long are you guys going to land this option? A year. Um, I think as of last December, we talked to my dad and we said, well, let's give it a year and see how the therapy goes and see if the speech, you know, because he, can he, can, can, he can think and he can understand everything you're saying to him. But when it comes time to convey the words, they just won't come out. So when he got reelected, did he know that he may not be able to stay the full term on his seat? Like, how did you guys? No. Um, and the whole, I guess, timeline behind that is that, you know, he was doing well. You know, we thought something was wrong after, right after the qualifications that year. But we thought he's working through it. He was still active, still going. And it wasn't until after the primary election that we started seeing a big change. And I guess that's when he had his second stroke around that time or so. But at that time, there wasn't a viable option 
for a candidate, so we weren't going to drop off his drop out. His concern was his community. His concern has always been his community, which is probably why he neglected his health as he did, having strokes and not going to check on because there was so much to be done. So he was just very dedicated. And we always thought that he could make a comeback. I mean, he's Doug Anderson. <laughs> he's the one that's going to fight till the end to get it done. And so, you know, I'm a believer in my dad, and I thought that he could recover as well. So You said you were the one who suggested it to him. Did he receive that right away, or did it kind of take a little pushing to get him to see your son? <laughs> my sister's laughing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason they're probably laughing is that I'm probably the one that's most like my dad. And I've been debating my dad since I was two years old. So um, when it comes time to suggest anything to him, I'm the one that's going to suggest it. Um, my sister, my brother, nor my mom, they won't suggest it. And when I um, said it, I said it, you know, I, I think it's time that um, you come home and let's start focusing on getting better. And we can still be active in the community. And, and just like my Uncle Jimmy, you know, he retired years ago, but he's still active. And we can still do things in the community. But let's focus on you. And he agreed, and you know he was ready. So, what was it like growing up with uh, Mr. Anderson and, and, and having always being in that political spotlight? You know, um, as his daughter, it was always like there's Doug Anderson's daughter. So I chose to go to Southern Mississippi instead of Jackson State to kind of get away. <laughs> but um, it was kind of you know my dad's always been involved in the community, so. He always had stuff he had to go and do, but at the same time, he always made sure that he spent time with us. Um, he just always made sure that we knew right or wrong. You know, if you know anything about Doug Anderson, you know that you're going to know where he stands. Love him or hate him, you know where he stands at all times. He's not going to lie to you. If he says he's with you, he's with you. If he's not, he's not. That's the one thing that I learned from my dad, is to always let, know people, let people know where I stand. Um, my dad doesn't believe there's anything as such thing as lukewarm. You're either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, you're pretty much cold. <laughs> so um, growing up with him, he was a lot of fun. I don't know if a lot of you know, but my dad thinks he can sing. So <laughs> he sang, he, he's always singing. He's still singing um, so, uh, a lot. He thinks he's Nat King Cole pretty much. Um, but just always fun. He's a jokester. Anybody that knows him knows he always has something funny to say, always something smart to say which I think is where a lot of us got, his kids got their personalities were kind of the same way. So a lot of fun with him. We had a lot of fun. Where's Supervisor Anderson now? He is at home babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> Have y'all talked to him about uh, supporting a successor to his uh, position? That was one of the other things that um, he had kind of been going back and forth on. Um, he did agree um, to support Joe Lewis in his run. Um, I think there were a couple others that may have come and spoken with him. But uh, and it's the irony of uh, my BFF here, Tony, being here is because that's who Tony defeated for city council. And uh, that was a fun race. We had the Battle of the Andersons, my best friend against one of his best friends. So, um, but as of right now, his choice to succeed him would be Joe Lewis. You, have you talked to Joe Lewis? Is he, is he interested in running for that position? Absolutely. Um, the one thing that Joe Lewis said is that he had decided that he wasn't going to run. But when Doug Anderson comes to you or, you know, y'all start talking about it, it's kind of hard to not, <laughs> even in the state that he can't speak, it's hard to say no. And my dad wanted somebody who actually lived in the district and didn't just buy property to deceive the voters of the district. He wanted somebody who had been working in the community. And Joe Lewis has been a longtime um, resident and has helped my dad for the past 30 years. Did you see anything recently, any specific moments <coughs> where he had trouble performing the job as supervisor? Anything that stuck, stuck out to you? Nothing in particular. Um, he had a couple of days when he woke up with low blood sugars. Um, and I have two juvenile diabetic children, so I don't know how familiar you, you are with it, but it feels like you have the flu is how my 12-year-old describes it. Um, and so he woke up and it just happened to be on board of supervisor meeting days and he wasn't able to come. But that's the only thing. When he has problems with his sugars, that's the only time I notice the difference in his performance.
Uh, we've uh, asked uh, the other family members, uh, Denise, but she does not want to, uh, does not wish to say something for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the quiet one. She's the outspoken one. <laughs> kind of like the behind the scene kind of person. But I'd just like to say thank you to all the uh, citizens in the community who supported my dad over the years. And to let you all know that he appreciates you all dearly. Again, thank you. From the Hans County Board of Supervisors, um, as policy dictates uh, by statute, uh, we will appoint uh, someone on an interim basis with the consent of the majority of the Board of Supervisors. If we are unable to uh, reach a consensus, then we will have to wait for a special election, and that next special election it will be held on November 5th, 2013. But. Um, at this point in time, we really don't know exactly where this is going to lead us. Uh, the board meets Monday. Uh, Mr. Anderson will be here Monday. He's expected to be here Monday and uh, for his uh, last board meeting. And uh, he would like to invite his friends and his supporters and the people that have supported him over the years uh, to come to that particular board meeting. Uh, today is uh, really not a good day to discuss where we're really going to go. Uh, from this point forward, but it's a good day to remember uh, the legacy that uh, Mr. Anderson leaves behind, the hard work, the friends um, that he made uh, while working here as a supervisor of the Hans County, and uh, the hard work that he did on behalf of the citizens of Hans County. Um, and unless there are any other questions, or are there any other questions from any other um, media outlet? You say this is effective January 1st. Okay. January 1st. All right. All right. If there are no other questions, then uh, we really appreciate you coming down. Thank you very much.